Dinosaurs are scary creatures, well at least while they were alive. We have been blessed with an abundance of movies focused on these fascinating archaic beasts. And some of the best dinosaur films happen to be in the Jurassic Park franchise. In the context of these six movies, of course the original Jurassic Park is the best. It's truly an amazing piece of cinema that blends sci-fi action adventure with elements of horror and showcases impressive visual and special effects for its time. Jurassic World honed in on our nostalgia for the original films and reignited our excitement to see dinosaurs again on the big screen. I mean, hey, does anyone else remember all those dinosaur reenactment TV shows? Sure, they look a little janky now, but I used to watch those all the time. Anyway, like most franchises, the films vary in quality, but the one thing all these movies have in common is how amazing the creatures look, whether they are brought to life with remarkable animatronics or outstanding CGI. They are the lifeblood of these movies, and are what keeps me coming back even if I know the plot might just be eh this time. Dinosaurs are living and breathing, but soon they're gonna have to watch them go extinct. Or not. Hate to break it to you, but dinosaurs have already gone extinct. Plus, we are already having problems with the thousands of currently endangered animals. <sighs> anyway, for this video, I wanted to pick out some of my favorites, but more specifically, the scariest dinosaurs featured in Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, and how their respective scenes push the movies into horror territory. In other words, I have picked out notably chilling scenes with the most terrifying of dinosaurs that evoke pure fear and dread. Let's set something straight. All the Jurassic Park movies are sort of horror adjacent, not necessarily pure horror films. They are predominantly sci-fi action adventure, but all of them have horror inspired sequences, like suspenseful scenes where, for example, someone is hiding from a villain or monster, or in this case, a dinosaur, trying not to get killed. Which is very reminiscent of horror movies like Predator, when Dutch is covered in mud to mask his heat from the Predator and Halloween, when Lori is hiding in the closet from Michael. Despite Fallen Kingdom's attempt to bring horror into the mix by making its main dino an extremely intelligent beast stalking its prey in a huge creepy house, I honestly don't think it worked as well as it might have on paper. I believe some of the scariest sequences came from other movies, more specifically Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, and Jurassic World Dominion. Now, since physical features do factor in making the dinosaurs scary, I will be taking into account how these animals appear in the films, and not how they might actually have looked in the past. Movies have changed the appearance of some dinosaurs to make them seem more threatening, like increasing their size, or giving them scales when they should have feathers. And while they might in fact look more or less intimidating in other scientifically accurate depictions, I will only be considering how they look in these films, just to simplify things a little. Obviously, there are a ton of dinosaurs featured throughout the six movies that make up the Jurassic Park franchise. I narrowed it down quite a bit to talk about a few of these creatures that shined in their capacity to terrify both the characters in the film and the audience. I don't think I can start with any other dinosaur than the Tyrannosaurus rex, because the T-Rex is the symbol of the original trilogy. There are many iconic scenes throughout the first movie, but possibly the most well-known of the franchise is when she has escaped her containment area and stalks the group. There is no doubt that a 40 foot long creature is scary, as we watch it tower over the humans and cars with a mouth large enough to eat you in one bite. But what makes it special is that the scene is so well crafted that even after almost 30 years, it is still effectively frightening. The sequence is shrouded in anxiety and dread, and is perfectly set up with a glass of water shaking in the car, and the sound of enormous, thundering footsteps getting closer, building tension as we the viewer know something big is on its way to terrorize our protagonist. The scene is dark and rainy as the T-Rex appears, setting up a tense mood, as everyone either tries to stay as still and quiet as possible to avoid detection from the, well, now debunked, motion-sensitive vision of the T-Rex, or they panic out of sheer terror and unwittingly capture the attention of the beast. We watch as the giant devours a man in the most compromising of positions and attacks the car with the children screaming inside. The T-Rex is simply doing what animals do, being curious in a new environment and at times looking for a fresh snack, even if that's a bit unfortunate for our main characters. Additionally, the sound design and lack of any music really immerse us into the situation. The scene is similar in tone to many classic horror situations where the protagonists are being hunted by the villain or monster, but because of how well crafted the scene is in its own unique way, it itself has become a staple in the horror genre. 
To us, the T-Rex is the quintessential dinosaur of all the dinosaurs, and we love the scene, especially because of how it showcases all the reasons that bringing these extinct beasts like the T-Rex back to life would be a horrible idea, despite them being objectively awe-inspiring. The movie has a similar story to classic horror films like Frankenstein, where the scientists have lost control of their creation, with the T-Rex being the main creature here. They are wild animals that are more deadly and unmanageable than any other animal we have in our zoos today, and this scene perfectly embodies that conflict. It is a celebrated and delightfully scary scene that shows us how horrifying the concept of Jurassic Park would be if done in the real world. Since, of course, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. The Velociraptors have become the mascots of the Jurassic World trilogy, with Blue being the leader. But as many of us know, before they were everyone's favorite trained pack hunters, the Velociraptors were the makers of many scares from the original movie. Another famous scene from Jurassic Park, after everything goes off the rails, is when Hammond's grandchildren become trapped in the hotel's kitchen, having to crawl around, hiding in cramped cabinets, to survive an encounter with two Velociraptors. This could be seen as a reference to The Shining, when Danny is hiding from Jack in a similar steel kitchen cupboard. There are both children hiding from something that will certainly terminate them with ease. We are shown that these animals are not only terrifying physically, but also mentally, since they are intelligent enough to open the kitchen door. Clever girl. This also being one of the multiple times we are focused on their claws, and the substantial one on their foot is especially frightening. Additionally, the set design truly stands out here, as the steel cabinets and appliances allow for reflections to show the predators and prey reacting to each other. At one point, both the hunters and the viewer are tricked into seeing the granddaughter in a reflection, momentarily thinking she is done for, shortly before one of the animals runs into a solid steel cabinet. This whole sequence is intensely suspenseful and ramps up until we are on the edge of our seat, watching as the kids barely make it out alive. Because of all this, this scene has also become an example of a masterful horror set piece, just like the T-Rex encounter. I know that by the end of the first Jurassic World movie, we aren't really scared of the Velociraptors anymore. Owen has basically become the dinosaur equivalent of Tiger King, trying to train lethal beasts as he sticks his hand out to just about every prehistoric animal now in almost meme-like fashion. Obviously, if we were to encounter one in real life, it would be terrifying. But I just wanted to be clear that for horror-based purposes, the velociraptors in the first film are the ones that are the stuff of nightmares. Everyone has their own specific fears, and for me, the ocean is certainly up there. It is vast and endless. Plus, I'm definitely not the best swimmer. And now that the colossal Mosasaurus is free in the open water, well, that's nightmare-inducing. It's not larger than a blue whale, but it will easily eat you alive in one bite. This dinosaur has had memorable scenes in all three Jurassic World movies. When the Jurassic World Park first started getting out of hand, we were subjected to possibly the cruelest scene in the entire franchise. Claire's assistant Zara is captured by pterosaurs, tossed around like a ragdoll, and dropped into the water, then quickly picked up again and eventually eaten whole by the Mosasaurus. She wasn't even a bad guy. She was just trying to do her job and watch these dumb kids. But that ended up costing her her life. That scene is relentless, and you know that once she's in the water, there is no hope for her. Even if you weren't in the same situation of being battered by one dinosaur after another, but you were in that water alone, no amount of Olympic level swimming could help you. In Fallen Kingdom, the dino devours a submersible, and in Dominion, an entire fishing boat was capsized by the beast pulling down on its catch of the day, so not even a large boat is safe. The Mosasaurus even killed the Indominus Rex in Jurassic World quite easily. All these scenes are effective in showing the horror of being anywhere near the water while this giant exists. There are many horror movies based in the ocean waters, with the most well-known being Jaws. Comparisons to Jaws are practically guaranteed with any water creature features, and in the first Jurassic World, we see the dinosaur compared to a great white in size when she is fed one for lunch. Even though the threat in Jaws is much, much smaller than that of the Mosasaurus, it evokes the same fears, immense uncertainty of your surroundings, and helplessness with no hope for escape. The darkness of the water conceals a killer beast that is ready and waiting for the perfect time to strike. The classic image of someone in the water with the shadow of a sharp-toothed animal just below them is haunting and used in both Jaws and the Jurassic World movies when showing a kill by the Mosasaurus. Honestly, if I was in the Jurassic World universe, I would never go near the ocean again. 
So, the last dinosaur I wanted to highlight is the one that we know less about, but definitely was the standout for me in Jurassic World Dominion, the Therizinosaurus. I never knew this thing existed, but wow, it is creepy. Claire's encounter with it is terrifying. She's initially held in the air by her parachute as the animal passes by her, smelling the air and listening closely. This one in particular seems to be at least partially blind, and Claire barely escapes by submerging herself in the nearby pond. The scene reminds me of the suspenseful and scary sequences from the original Jurassic Park, and that was something I really appreciated. We are holding our breath, just like Claire, as she slowly crawls away from the beast. The scene emphasizes the creature's quality and it is much different than any dinosaur we have seen in the previous movies. It's covered in feathers, a new trait for some of these prehistoric animals, as it is more accurate to what they really looked like in the past. Even though we're not used to seeing dinos with feathers, the giant is still effectively frightening. The beast has long, robust claws that are emphasized by it attacking a deer showing how strong they are. For the majority of the scene, it hovers its claws around Claire, as we are waiting for it to attack her as well. With these long claws, there are obvious similarities to Freddy Krueger and his bladed leather glove. Wes Craven said that when he was creating Freddy, he knew he had to make a unique weapon to make him unforgettable. And I think that is why the Therizinosaurus works so well in this movie. It set itself apart from the rest of the creatures with its strange features. It is an unusual dinosaur, being close in size to the T-Rex, but actually being a herbivore. It is not that obvious from the movie since it is seen killing a deer and following our protagonist until she disappears under the water. But it's cool to see a herbivore that is scary. Being an herbivore doesn't mean that the beast is harmless and cute. It is refreshing to see this kind of dinosaur being featured in a movie in a menacing way, as it is so different from the others. The scene also succeeds in creating the eerie and tense feeling similar to that felt during the original Jurassic Park movie, something Fallen Kingdom tried too hard to achieve. There were so many dinosaurs to choose from, but these stood out to me for having the scariest and most notable scenes that highlighted the ferocity of these beasts and momentarily threw us into the horror genre. There were plenty of others that I could have chosen, but I felt that they were either not quite scary enough or not utilized to their full potential in the movies. Dilophosaurus have proven to be deadly with their venomous spit, but even though they are iconic now, after a couple of great scenes, their size lessens their scare factor. I liked the scene in Dominion with the Pyroraptor, but it was short and it was not seen in the movie again, despite being in plenty of the promotional material. Same with the Quetzalcoatlus, just one quick scene that didn't utilize the animal's full potential to terrorize its prey. For me, the T-Rex, Velociraptor, Mosasaurus, and Therizinosaurus, and how they were showcased, really helped the franchise shine with the effective horror-inspired sequences. There is no wonder why this franchise, well, specifically the original trilogy, is frequently argued over whether it should be considered horror. Jurassic Park was a groundbreaking movie that probably ignited a lot of children's obsessions, and maybe nightmares, with dinosaurs, and for good reason. Dinosaurs were amazing creatures that were both magnificent and extremely intimidating. Because of these movies, we know how much of a gloriously bad idea creating Jurassic Park would be if it ever came to fruition in the real world. I mean, they were kind of just asking for something to go wrong, right? In the words of Dr. Ian Malcolm, the scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to ask if they should. Boy, no, I had been right all the time.